video, we'll talk about how to describe relationships between measurements with function. Okay? So function is a specific kind of relationship between variables. Okay? You can think of it as sort of a map that takes an input, and then this function will map that input to an output. And also call that an argument, right? It takes an argument, takes an argument, and maps an argument to some function value. Or you can say it takes independent variables and gives you a dependent, right? Any of these terminologies things in terms of functions. Okay, and so then the collection of all the possible inputs that you're allowed to put into this function, all the domain, and the collection of all the possible outputs that this function can spit out, all the range. Okay, and so let's go to a more concrete example. All right, so uh, last video we had example from population growth. Right, we had this bacterial colony, and we collected some data and we made a function p equals f of t, right? The population was some function of the time at which we were checking. Okay, so in a graph, this looked like we had p on our x axis since it was our independent variable in hours and it mapped p, the population, in millions, right? So our function something like this. Data kind of sat around along this line, this curve. And so this is a function because it takes a specific time, right, for every time on, say, star, and this was mapped to some particular, okay. so we saw that, you know, uh, particular time t star, this function gives us the population map t star. Okay? And so if you remember this this first initial population was like 0.5 million. Okay? And so the domain and range of this function, right? What you know what t values, right? What values of this independent variable are we allowed to put into this function? Well, this was a real experiment, so time started at zero and you could keep counting forever, right? So our domain was T, our domain should be T greater than or equal to zero. Starting from zero and any other time is fine, just stick it to this function. And then P goes from this original population level off, well, starting from T zero. So for any time greater than zero, we're able to get any population level, and the, the range of possible population levels started from where we started, and then just kept going. So, you know, not every relationship between variables is a function, though. All right, there are plenty of situations where the variables are related in some way that can't be described by a clean function, a clean one-to-one -one function, right? So you could have something like this, right? X, Y, and the relationship looks like this, okay? So then what's wrong with this? Okay, well, if we pick an X here, right? over X zero, and we stick this into our relationship, right? And we try to get out a Y value, you could get any of these y values along where this vertical line intersects with this curve, right? You could get this one, this one, or that one. Right? There are three possible y values for this relationship. So what that means is that this relationship is not a function. It, the function should be able to give you 
single y value or a single x value. Okay? And so this is what's called the vertical line test, where you take your graph, draw a vertical line through it, and if your vertical line crosses your graph more than once, then that means you have this situation, right? It means that you have more than one possible outputs for a given input, which means it's not a function. Okay? So not a function if a vertical line crosses the graph more than once. Okay? And this isn't just some contrived, you know, uh, curve that we can't describe with a mathematical function or a mathematical expression. You know, you can get this sort of situation from, you know, pretty clean looking mathematical expression, right? So it can get this, these situations from mathematical expressions, right? It's not just something that I, I pulled out of thin air. Right? Let's take a circle. Um, a circle can be described by the formula x squared plus y squared and say equals 1, or this radius 1. Right? So if we plot this circle in x, x and y plane, right, if you take a particular x value, let's say we take this one, call that x0, right? If this is our given x value, the vertical line test says, you know, either of these y values here or here would satisfy this equation up here, right? So this one and that one down there, either y value satisfies x0 squared plus y. Okay? So this is also, you know, that means this formula is not a function. Right. Fails the vertical line test on a function. And this can arise from you know an experiment too. Um, this can arise from experiments. So in the previous video, we ran that experiment with the uh, population levels, and we did that in three different temperatures. Okay. So if I grab. Oh, okay. I'll erase this. Okay, if you remember what we had before, we had this collection of data, right? So we describe these th these three things as you know three separate functions. Three separate functions where a parameter was kind of what described which function we were, we were dealing with. But you might ask if there's a way to represent all this data with a single function, right? And the answer would be no. And why would it be no? Well, it would fail the vertical line test, right? We drew a vertical line, let's say here, then we intersect, you know, our data more than once. So it fails. Okay? So recognizing when you have a function and when you don't have a function, when you're dealing with data, can, can help you build up your models 